Starting off the countdown at number 5, we have Mario Kart 64. Mario Kart 64 is a kart racing video game released by Nintendo in 1996 as the successor to Super Mario Kart. The family favorite featured bright, appealing graphics and was easy for all ages to play with its intuitive controls and its simplistic gameplay layout. Another strong point of Mario Kart 64 was that the game offered a variety of game modes that had something for everyone. Grand Prix, Time Trial, Versus Mode, and my personal favorite, Battle Mode. If you wanted to see how fast you could finish a race, Time Trial is where you'd do that. If you didn't want to race, you try to beat your friends in battle mode with a goal of being the last player standing. The video game had bright and detailed racetracks, which sometimes made you feel like you were transported to a magical world. Mario Kart 64 was a popular game among N64 players like me and received popular reviews from critics. Worldwide, the game sold 9.87 million copies, making it the second best-selling N64 game, only surpassed by Super Mario 64. Mario Kart 64 is a top favorite of mine because I was already a big fan of Super Mario Kart, so when the game came out for N64, I felt the upgraded version was a nice improvement to an already amazing amazing game. Pokemon Stadium 2 was released by Nintendo in the year 2000, one year after the original Pokemon Stadium. Just like its predecessor, the game allowed us to battle it out just like Ash as a Pokemon trainer. But the new upgraded game came with many new features. This time we had 251 Pokemon to choose from, up 100 from the previous version. Pokemon Stadium 2 also came with 12 brand new mini games to enjoy. We could win trophies while playing solo in tournament mode, or play against our friends in the free battle mode. Pokemon appears with a cross. A fun feature of the Pokemon Stadium games is that if you played with Pokemon on your Game Boy, you could import your own Pokemon into the game and use them to fight. That meant the Togepi you trained since the day it hatched on your Game Boy could be used to fight on the TV screen in your room. It was epic. Pokemon Stadium 2 was a must-have for Pokemon fans like me during that time, especially if you played the role-playing games on Game Boy. At number 3, we have something a little different. WWF No Mercy. Back in those days, WWF was a cultural phenomenon. So naturally, there were video games produced that catered to the popularity of the sport. WWF No Mercy was one of those games. It was released by the American video game company THQ in the year 2000. Through WWF No Mercy, fans could experience the sport in a whole new way. They could choose from over 60 WWF wrestlers and battle it out against their friends. While I personally didn't watch WWF on TV, I did enjoy playing this game. WWF No Mercy is a favorite of mine because it offered so much more than other fighting games available at the time. You could tell there was just so much effort put into this game, like the entrances of the wrestlers, which I thought were hilarious. and how you weren't confined to the arena and could take the fight outside if you wanted to. You could even pick up random props from the audience and use them as weapons. I also liked how I could be creative and create my own wrestler to fight with. WWF No Mercy reached critical acclaim and is regarded by many as one of the top wrestling video games ever made. To this day, there is still much appreciation for WWF No Mercy. Over 20 years since its initial release, WWF No Mercy retains a cult following of fans who continue to play and even modified the existing game with new arenas and characters. My second top N64 video game of all time is Mario Party. Mario Party was developed by the Japanese video game company Hudson Soft in 1998. In this game, we got to play as either Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, Wario, Yoshi, or Donkey Kong. The goal of the game was to collect as many stars as you could and become crowned the superstar. To do that, we had to collect coins while playing a variety of minigames. There was actually over 50 minigames games to play. I liked Mario Party because it wasn't just fun, it was also challenging. The mini games really tested your skills. Attention to detail, speed, patience. <laughs> Man, 
Yes. It was also both a game of skill and chance. You needed skills to beat the games, but you also needed a little bit of luck to move your way around the game board. The novel board game concept made Mario Party stand out against all other video games at the time. The large variety of minigames made it so that there was never a dull moment. Mario Party was so good that it was the start of nine sequels to follow and had versions made for Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, and the Nintendo 3DS. At the top spot, my all-time favorite N64 game is... I am a huge Super Smash Bros. fan. This crossover fighting game was released in 1999 and developed by the Japanese developer HAL Laboratory. In this game, we could choose to play as characters from Super Mario, Donkey Kong, The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Yoshi, Kirby, Star Fox, and Pokemon. The game was a good representation of the most popular video games at the time. Each character had their own distinct battle moves, which were activated through pressing a combination of buttons. But we didn't just have our fighting skills to beat our friends, oh no. Gameplay was enhanced by the presence of a variety of battle items. These props came from the universes of each character's present the background music and stages where the battles were fought were also from the different worlds. I love how Super Smash Bros. was this conglomerate of different games all in one. In what other game could you have Kirby fight Pikachu or Zelda fight Donkey Kong? Super Smash Bros. had the engaging fighting element of WWF No Mercy together with the colorful variety of Mario Party. The infinite different combinations of characters, stages, and props during a match made each one unique and exciting. Super Smash Bros. was a smashing success, selling over 5 million units worldwide. This popular game was the start of a series that spanned nearly 20 years with 4 sequels, earning over $60 million in sales. Did you play Nintendo 64 when you were younger? What do you consider the top 5 N64 video games of all time? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up <laughs> and subscribe for more. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at dialupdigest. Until next time my friends, dialing out.